Let's start this series by talking about the most powerful Etruscan city, Tarkna, also known as Tarkuna. Tarkna was founded on the Etruscan coast in the 9th century BC. It thrived thanks to its position. The people had a river to grow crops, a mine to extract minerals, and access to the sea to trade around Europe. By the 8th century BC, Tarkna became a rich trade center which exchanged merchandise and cultural practices with the Greeks in southern Italy. It also became an influential religious center and an order of Aruspex was founded in the city. The Aruspex was a type of priest who was specialized in some specific ritual that I can't really wrap my head around, but what we need to know is that they were prestigious and important for Tarkna. In the 6th century BC, Tarkna started trading with the Carthaginians. This allowed them to eclipse Vey, Cerveteri and other Etruscan cities around them in terms of wealth and prestige. It was during this time that ruling families started to become more and more influential and so a sort of oligarchic government was formed. Members of these families didn't rule only in Tarkna but also in other cities around Italy, particularly two of the kings of Rome, Lucius Tarquinius Precious and Lucius Tarquinius Superbus were, as the name implies, originally from Tarkna. When Rome overthrew its monarchy in the 5th century, they went to war with Tarkna, where they won. Tarkna lost a lot of prestige from this and did not do much for a century. Then the Sporina family came in and uh, this family is credited for getting the city out of the economic stagnation by starting the new artistic golden age of the 4th century. During this period the city grew both in influence and territory. In fact, the city itself also expanded together with its walls, which are still standing today to an extent. The testament of the artistic revolution by the Spurinas uh, can be seen in their tombs, which look pretty great. Thanks to its wealth, uh, powerful army and tall walls, the Tarkna was not affected by the Celtic invasion of Brennus in 385 BC, unlike uh, its neighbors, uh, particularly Rome. They took advantage of uh, the weakness of their fellow Etruscans uh, after the Celts were defeated and eclipsed more and more city-states in the following decades. Mid 3rd century BC has to be Tarkna's peak in uh, pretty much everything. They were the unofficial Etruscan capital of the league. They were rich, influential, had a lot of trade partners, had the best mines, had the best metal and its armies had the best equipment. They had it all, but then Rome had to come in and ruin everything. Tensions between the two lasted throughout most of their golden age, though only at the end of the 3rd century the odds started to favor Rome. Tarkna slowly lost power throughout the 2nd century until it became part of the Roman Republic in 204 BC. Most of what is left of the Etruscan Tarkna are the necropolises and there are many of them. Here's a list. They are so great and so well preserved that the most of them have been recognized as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO, which is amazing to say the least. I guess that's it. See you next time.